Good morning, everybody. I am Dr. Dilip M. Babu, consultant nephrologist and kidney transplant physician at Eshoda Hospital, Somaji Guda, Hyderabad. This video I am making for the patient education who are planning to undergo a kidney transplant surgery. Kidney transplant is an option for the patients who have permanent kidney damage. Like once patient is diagnosed with a permanent kidney damage, then he will have two options. One option is to do a kidney transplant. Another option is to do continuous hemodialysis weekly three times rest of his life. Once we give this option to the patient of doing dialysis versus going ahead with the kidney transplant, it is the patient choice. But as far as the quality of life and long term survival is concerned, kidney transplant is always the better option. So if someone is, is confused before, between deciding between the kidney transplant and the dialysis and best option available for that patient is to undergo kidney transplant as far as the survival, long term survival of the patient as well as the quality of life. Once patient decided about the kidney transplant, I want to tell you few things which every patient who is planning to undergo kidney transplant should compulsory know. So, kidney transplant is planned if the patient is having the donor. Now, donor may be one of his family member like brother, sister, mother, father or husband or second degree relatives for his maternal side or from the paternal side. So, these relatives whose blood group is same, suppose patient's blood group is B and someone is planning to donate from his family member whose blood group is B, that person from his family member can donate his kidneys to the patient. So, any patient with blood group of O, patient's relatives who is having blood group of O, he can donate the kidney to the patient. So, the person who is donating kidney either should have same blood group or blood group O because O blood group person can donate the kidney to any person. So, first thing what we do is once someone from the family member of the patient comes ahead, comes forward for the donation, we check the blood group of the donor as well as the patient. If blood group is matching, then we do further tests. Remember the patient who is having, patient's relatives who is having blood group O, he can donate the kidney or the same blood group. If once donor is decided, next step is to do the investigations. We do the all the blood tests as well as the total body checkup of the donor. Like we do rec their cardiac checkup, their pulmonology, that lung status, we check their blood pressure, blood sugars and all the vital parameters as well as all the investigations before finalizing them as a donor. So, donor has to undergo investigations as well as few fitness tests from cardiologist and pulmonologist. If the patient, donor patient is a female, we will tell them to do gynecologic checkup also. So, donor they will have a lot of doubts ki what will happen after donating one kidney to them. So, usually 1 in 10,000, usually 90-95 percent, the person who is donating the kidney, they will not have any problem in future. They can do all the work, they can, they will not have any diet restrictions or they do, they need not have to take any medications after the donation of the kidney. Usually, we do all the tests for the donor, then only we will accept them as a kidney donor. So, first thing is, we will check the blood group, whether it is matching with the patient Next test, we do all the investigations, blood, urine test, as well as their heart checkup like ECG, 2D echo. We check up their lungs by doing chest x-ray, pulmonary function test. We will do the viral screening test for the donor and then finalize if they don't have BP, they don't have sugar, they don't have heart disease, then we finalize them as a potential donor. So, donor, we remove only one kidney and uh, that kidney, which kidney has to be removed from the donor is decided by test like DTPA renogram and CT renal angiogram. These two tests we do routinely for all donors to find out which kidney has to be removed and which kidney has to be kept in the 
donor. So after doing these two tests, DTP renogram and CT renal angiogram, we decide which kidney has to be taken. Usually the donor kidney has, usually we remove donor kidney by doing laparoscopic uh, nephrectomy. It is a small incision surgery. So with that small incision, we remove the donor kidney. And usually donor after the surgery, they have to stay in the hospital for two or three days. Once they their condition stabilized, we discharge them. They can go back to their normal routine activities seven days after the surgery. We usually advise donors after the surgery to come after six months initially and every year we want them to routinely do all the checkups like BP, blood pressure, sugar and their kidney function test. Usually one in 10,000 patients who has donated their kidney on the long terms by the end of 10 years, 15 years, if they develop diabetes or hypertension, that single kidney may get affected. But if they take care of their weight and blood pressure and sugars, they will be as normal as any other person. But the donors, we usually advise them to follow up at least once in a year for routine checkup after the kidney donation. Now, as far as the kidney recipient, like kidney transplant recipient, where we put a kidney of the donor, usually there are doubts that whether the native kidneys the doctor will remove my original kidneys or not. No, normally we don't remove the native kidneys, the original kidneys, which are visually very small and non-functional. Only few conditions where we remove the native kidneys are polycystic kidney disease or patient is having kidney stones and infections or kidney size is very large and it is infected, then we remove the original kidneys. and the the, usually in other kind of patients, normally we don't remove the original kidneys. We put extra kidney near the lower part of the abdomen. This kidney will be anastomosed to the recipient's donor, uh, recipient's artery, vein and ureter, urinary bladder. So there will be three connections. The donor artery is connected to the recipient artery, donor vein will be connected to the recipient vein and donor ureter will be connected to the urinary bladder of the recipient. So these three connections will be made. Usually this surgery is done under general anesthesia and the patient is closely monitored after the surgery for any other surgical complications. So I want to discuss few things about surgical complications after the transplant in the recipient. Usually as I told you there are three anastomoses. One is artery, one is vein and one is the ureter. So sometimes there may be blockage to the donor the artery or block into the vein or there may be some urine leak from the ureter. So these are these leakages or block of these three connections may happen immediately after transplant. But we usually closely monitor them for these complications. If these complications arise, we immediately shift them back to the OT and remove these obstructions by doing another surgery. But these complications are quite rare but these complications are known to occur in few patients like you can say one in thousand cases we found out these type of complications another complications which we face after the kidney transplant is the rejection immediately sometimes we see after putting the donor kidney the body may not accept that kidney immediately on table the kidney will turn suddenly into the blue so that is called as hyperacute rejection. This kind of rejection may occur immediately after the surgery or during the first week or three months or year. So rejections may happen any time. So but first three months are very important as these three months there is high chance of rejection. So this is one of the possibility after the kidney transplant that recipient's kidney, recipient's body may not accept that kidney which is called as rejection. Now to avoid these rejections, we give some injections and tablets which has which usually we start before transplant only. These medicines like tacrolimus, mycophenolate and steroid injections as well as sometimes we use few injections like simulect and thymoglobulin at the time of transplant or after the surgery to prevent these rejections. With these kind of medicines, rejection rates have come down significantly. Now rejection even if the rejection happens after the transplant, 
usually we try to do a transplant kidney biopsy by removing a small piece of the transplanted kidney and checking it whether it is a rejection or not if it is rejection we usually treat with again inject few other medications like steroid injections with which rejection can be reversed only 1 to 2% cases where rejections may not respond to any standard treatment and patient's kidney may get failed and they will go back to the dialysis so sometimes this kidney which after immediately putting after the surgery this kidney may not start functioning immediately this type of kidney failure we call as delayed graft function where we have to give some time to the transplanted kidney to start functioning and in this period we do dialysis one or two sessions of dialysis till the kidney starts working this is called as delayed graft function this also complications sometimes we face immediately after the transplant after the transplant patient has to take these immunosuppressive medications like tacrolimus mycophenolate and steroid tablets rest of their life if they stop these medications any time after one year two year or within a one year the body may reject these kidneys and the patient will come back to the dialysis so we will give the instructions to the patient not to stop any of these medications after the transplant because once you stop these medications for one or two days also the body may reject these kidneys and your kidney transplanted kidney may get failed and you will come back to the dialysis another complications what we face immediately after transplant is the infections infections may occur at the surgical site where we put a kidney or by because of the urine leak sometimes happens and patient will start uh, leaking at the site where urine tube is connected to the bladder this is called as urine leak and these infections may happen at the surgical site or infections may happen into the lungs infection may happen into the urinary tract so these infections are caused by usually bacteria but sometimes rarely we have seen with the virus like cytomegalovirus and fungal infections also which may affect your lungs your kidneys your abdomen or surgical site wound infections if these infections happen we have to give antibiotics if it is a virus like cytomegalovirus we give antiviral medications like valgancyclovir if it is fungal infection we give antifungal medicines but these infections sometimes becomes we even after giving the antibiotics and antiviral and antifungal infection antifungal medicines these infections sometimes is life threatening which may cause life may patient may lose the life because of these infections in spite of giving all these antibiotics so there are chances of death if these infections occur but we usually take the precautions to avoid such kind of infections by giving prophylactic antibiotics to prevent these infections third problem which is quite common after the transplant is the recurrence of the original disease like recurrence means the original kidneys which has been damaged by some disease the same disease may come into the transplanted kidney which is called as recurrence like few diseases like fsgs or some glomerular disease which recur in higher percentage like 30 40% or 60% cases we seen we have seen these diseases come into the transplant kidney and we treat for these diseases but still sometimes we may lose the transplanted kidney because of this recurrence of original disease in the transplanted kidney as far as these complications are concerned these are known to occur in 5 to 6% of patients out of 100 we have seen these complications 5% cases but these complications are known to occur so every patient who is planning for kidney transplant should know all these complications after the transplant another thing after transplant they have to follow the regular checkups like first uh, every week two times we call the patient for first 3 months and then every week till 6 months and then every two weeks till one year after the transplant even after one year we call them every month for routine checkups so every patient should know they have to come regular for checkups we check up their urine creatinine levels hemoglobin levels cholesterol levels regularly to prevent to preserve that kidney and we can detect if any early kidney damage is because of early rejection or any infection we can detect it and treat it and patient has to take these medications like tacrolimus mycophenolate and steroid rest of their life they can't stop these medications if they stop these medications their transplanted kidney may get rejected 
and they will come back to the dialysis stage so they have to follow some dietary precautions as far as quality of life is much better as compared to as they are on dialysis they will have freedom of eating there will be no dietary restrictions predominantly if the patient is having high blood pressure or sugar they have to control the diet for blood pressure and sugar but kidney functions will be normal their creatinine will come down to normal after the transplant and their quality life will be much better so you these are the usually this video i have prepared for the educating the patients because they should not plan for the transplant before knowing all these things so best of luck to all the patients thank you